Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is April, and I'm here with my husband, Rob, and we are in preparation for our upcoming Disney World trip, so I figured it would be kind of fun for us to sit and kind of have a little bit of a conversation about our previous Disney World trips, and then kind of like our thoughts and hopes for this upcoming trip. I just thought it would be kind of fun. We are sitting in our car because we have kids, and we're just trying to get away, <laughs> so we're sitting in our car while my in-laws are watching our kids. So if you hear like car sounds, I apologize. But um, I just was going to ask you a little bit about our past trips and like things that we've kind of learned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first I'll just start with what is your favorite, I was gonna say what was your favorite ride, but I'll ask you per park. Okay. Because we've yeah, been to most parks. To... Yeah. So what is your favorite ride in Magic Kingdom? It's really hard because I don't know. Probably Space Mountain. Space Mountain, yeah, I knew that. About so you. it was really cool. Or maybe Haunted Mansion. Yeah, I that Magic Kingdom's really hard because it has like all the rides. It has like every single. <laughs> it has like all the rides. It's so, all pretty cool too, like uh, Peter Pan. Like yeah. even the stuff that isn't real exciting. It's been around for a long time. Yeah, it's the big dark rides yeah. for that park mostly. I think mine. Mine used to be Splash Mountain, but I'm I'm excited about the Tiana's bayou adventure but i i think mine more so now would be uh i don't know i like the old ones like tiki room tiki room is one of my favorites just because of the um not nostalgia but like the vibe the, the like old school disney but that or like poo just because i have memories from being a kid and doing the poo ride um, okay, so what is your favorite ride at Epcot? Hmm. It's all hard. Probably it's all hard. <laughs> yeah, mine is either Soarin' or Living with the Land, only because I just love Living with the Land. Yeah. It's an all time favorite. Okay, Hollywood. Hollywood. What was yours? I don't know. Uh, we're not big Hollywood people. Yeah, I don't really care for Hollywood that much. I feel like we were there for half a day. We did all the stuff that we really wanted to do. We weren't there for the whole day, but... We were there for a full day. Yeah. We were, but about half of the day, and I was like, I would probably rather be at Epcot. Well, Henry fell asleep, so we kind of just wandered around. We didn't, like, do all the rides. We drank blue milk, like, twice. Yeah. All of us. We had, like, two of them. Yeah. Yeah, so I think... Okay, so... Toy Story Land is really the big draw there for me. So I think I think it would be just like Slinky Dog for me. What was that one called? It was uh, Toy Story Mania. Toy Story Mania. That one was pretty cool. We got to go twice because Henry started freaking out. And uh, the cast member, she let us go again. Yeah. Because she, she could tell he was having such a hard time. Yeah. She's like, do you want to go again? Yeah, she kind of pixie dusted us with that. It was really nice. It was yeah. nice. Um, and then, okay, what's the last one? Animal Kingdom. That's what we spent a half a day. That was like our first trip. That's probably my favorite. Yeah. Well, like Epcot, Animal Kingdom, yeah. Tide. Um, Flight of Passage is really cool. Mm hmm. Yeah. Also, another one that we had a lot of fun on, which like they're going to be taking away Dino Land. Did I tell you that? I don't care about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember when we were on uh, Dino's Whirlwind or whatever it's mm -hmm. it called? And that guy was like hilarious on it. That was fun. That was oh, a fun yeah. one. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that was fun. But yeah, I think Flight of Passage is my favorite also. Yeah, I have to agree. Okay, so something that I was kind of thinking about, what really brought this question to mind is because of our honeymoon. Our, what is something that we did in our past trips that we kind of learned and we're going to do differently? The dining plan. The dining plan. Yeah. So for our honeymoon, we ended up doing the deluxe dining plan, which actually isn't even offered anymore because it's just so much food. So a little bit of backstory about the, the deluxe dining plan is you get three sit-down meals every single day of your stay. And with each sit-down meal, you get each person gets an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. So that's two the appetizers, two entrees, and two desserts every single sit-down meal, like every single meal. And you can still do the quick services, 
But whenever you try to do that in our experiences, they kind of look at you like, why are you trying to do a quick service when you can do a sit down meal? Yeah, they actually talked us out of this one time. Yeah, they talked us out of it. So what we actually ended up doing was doing a lot of signature meals. So a lot of like character meals and um, like we ate in the castle. We just did a lot of signature meals because we were trying to use up all of our credits because it was just so much food. So. Yeah, we kind of lost a little bit of the experience because of it though, because we were consistently trying to use all the money that we put into the dining plan. It kind of started to feel like a waste. Yeah. And I felt sick a lot of the time because it's way too much food. It's Even so if you're used to eating a lot of food, like really big meals, I think it's still way too much. Yeah, it is. And yeah, it was one of those things where we didn't make a bunch of dining plans because we kind of just wanted to come, like go on our own. Like the only dining, like, did I say dining plan? <laughs> The only dining reservations that we actually made on our honeymoon was like eating inside the castle and um, Beating the Beast, the restaurant, the Beating the Beast restaurant, and just like the like big ones, like Garden Grill is another one. And so we only really had like a few character meals on the docket. So then whenever we were actually there, we were like, oh my gosh, like how are we gonna use all these dining credits? Because it, it was just a lot, it was a lot. So. We actually have decided that for us personally, we like to kind of just go and look and just get what sounds best to us. So we really don't make a whole lot of dining reservations. So but the way I would like to do it, especially if there's a festival, you just, everybody gets different things at each booth and then you put it down and just everybody. Yeah. And we actually, we do that whatever. even at like quick services. So like, well, if there's something that each of us want to try, we will get a couple different things even at like a quick service and we will like split it up between all of us as a family so we'll give henry like a little bit of everything we'll have a little bit of, so like we all get to try a bunch of different things so we're trying a lot of food and that's really the way that we do a lot of our trips oh i mean like since then since our first trip as a couple and we learned our lesson with the, the deluxe but now we will like for our last trip that's kind of what we did is we just went and got like snacks and snacks can actually be like a meal <laughs> like it could be a good meal replacement because the snacks are just giant so yeah we just we, we don't even really do dining plans anymore which they just came back this year so this is like with only like a couple months ago is when the dining plans came back so that is that um, another thing I was going to say, which I was thought would be kind of like interesting to say too, is this is just a little bit of advice in the way that we are probably going to be doing this is if you're planning on doing, if you're trying playing to like meet a character or have your kids meet a character, if you're able to do that at a character meal, like I would suggest doing that rather than trying to go in the park and wait in line to meet this character, especially if you're trying to avoid doing Genie Plus. Um, which is actually something that we're going to be doing on this trip is instead of going into the park and trying to do a meet and greet with a character we're going to do a like character meal that way you're not having to waste time inside the park to wait in line and meet a character you can just do whatever you want to do in the in the park but with that being said not every single character is at a character meal so like you just really have to maneuver that however is best for you but that, that's something that I figured would be kind of interesting to note. Okay, what was I going, there was another thing I was going to say about our last trip. Oh, okay, so something else I was gonna say is that something we've discovered through our past trips is that we like going to the resorts just as much as we like going to the parks, if not better, right. would you say? Yeah, and that's kind of what this trip's gonna be mostly made of is because we're not, we're only going to one park. We're yeah. going to go to Epcot one day and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So this trip, which I haven't really talked a whole lot about the actual plans of our trip this, this time around, but that is true. We aren't going to be going to all of the parks or anything like that. We are actually going to be mostly, it was a staycation when we booked this trip because we had to move it, but we just recently tacked on an Epcot day because we're also bringing my mother-in-law. And she's never been to Disney World at all whatsoever. And so with us having it being a staycation, we wanted to still like have her have the experience of a park. So I think it's gonna be really fun because we love Flower Garden. That's what it was whenever we went for our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Something I said I would never do and, and we're doing it this trip is we're going during the spring break craziness. Which I'm not happy about. I didn't even think about that 
until like two days ago. Yeah, well, I explained that a little bit in a, pre a past video, which I will link above for you if you want to check that out. But we were originally supposed to be going later on in the year, and we moved it up in order to make things work with our schedules and things like that. And so with that being the case, it ended up putting us during spring break. But as I had mentioned, we were going to just do a staycation, so I really wasn't all that worried about the crowds because I figured we'll just be going from resort to resort and swimming a lot and that sort of a thing. But I never, I said I was never going to do that. I don't like going during the crazier times of the year, but I'm, I think it's still going to be fun. I did book it. I looked at the crowd calendar before we booked our actual park day and it is supposed to be the less crazy day, like the lower crowd days of the days that we'll be there. So hopefully that'll get us through. If we have to buy Genie Plus, I, I will do that and do standby skipper for all of us. But, um, so yeah, I, I never said, I said I was never going to do that and we're going to be doing that this time around. But back on to us enjoying the resorts. I feel like that's not like something that you hear all that often of people just like spending the days like resort hopping. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's becoming more and more of a thing now, but I feel like that like we always watched DFB Guide since before we went as a couple to Disney World. And she always suggested, like, go resort hopping and check out the resorts. And we did that, and we fell in love with that before we really fell in love with the parks. Like, that was the first thing that we did at every single time. So the way we do our trips is when we arrive and the, when we leave, we will have those full days as resort days so that we can kind of just explore and, like, hop around and do whatever whatever we want to do. That That's just... We end up having more fun doing that than I mean we enjoy the parks too obviously that's a big part of it but we fell in love with that pretty pretty quickly um let me think okay just a fun question what's your favorite snack that you've had in Disney World if you can think of one probably the they call the Kringla the Kringla yeah yeah you've gotten that at every um, every time that we've gone it's pretty good yeah that is a good one. Um, it's really hard for me to pick one, but it's probably something from Caramel Cuche or Kuchta. They're right next to each other too. Yeah, they are. And I also like Norway's, what is that called? I guess Kringla Bakery. Kringla, yeah. yeah. Kringla Bakery. Okay, and then last question, and then we'll just wrap this up. What is your favorite park in Disney World? It's either Animal Kingdom or Epcot. Yeah, you said that. Mine? Let's see, it's hard because Magic Kingdom is awesome too because like Haunted Mansion and like I said, Space Mountain. The Disney, the Disney vibe. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there that you wouldn't be Disney if, if yeah, it wasn't, wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. So Magic Kingdom and Epcot, they're pretty much tied, but I think Epcot wins out just a little bit just because I really love World Showcase. I, Epcot and Magic Kingdom are my favorite, but World Showcase wins out for me because... I love all the food that's in the World Showcase. I think I picked that too, honestly, the World Showcase. My favorite thing out of everything there, just because you could spend so much time being immersed in different things. And as I get older, it's not as exciting for me to do attractions. Yeah. I mean, I like the dark rides and all that, but I don't want to do anything that's thrilling yeah. all the time. Because especially since you just get used to like the humdrum work days that you do here and then you go and it's like, I don't need anything that crazy, but I want to be a like a part of an environment that's fun but I don't want to be you know I mean I don't need to do all the crazy stuff anymore yeah well and like a big draw for me and I think this is like a big thing for people who haven't especially adults who haven't been to Disney World ever is that like I think everybody thinks that Disney World is like a Disney version of Six Flags and it's literally nothing like that yeah that's true um, at the same time, though, whenever the lines get really long, yeah, that is a part that I could do without, and that, I think that's part of the reason why, like, the attractions aren't the biggest thing for me. It could just be walking around Epcot or walking around a resort because you can just kind of, you know, be in your own your own leisure time. But whenever you're in line, you're in line. It's really cool there because you get a cool like a kind of cool environment, but you're still standing in a line. Yeah, we miss Fast Pass Plus. Yeah, we miss that. Yeah, we miss that. To a lot. me, honestly. If I were to say, like, my biggest thing that would push me from going to Disney World, uh -huh. it would be lines. Yeah. But I there's enough to make up for that, I think. 
um, but the lines are just not good. Yeah, I I truly, like I said, I'm totally okay with going to Disney and just doing a staycation because you get the Disney vibes from the resorts and just like all the details of Disney, just like the smells and they, they just put so much detail into literally everything, everything. And that makes it for me. It really does. And I, I, I love that. Also, if the inclusiveness of Disney, like when you think about like an all inclusive situation, obviously Disney World is not that because you still have to pay for food and you still have to pay for drinks. But it still feels that. like it because you get a, you could buy your resort mug and then yeah. you can walk around and you can drink whatever you want. You yeah. Know, tea, like I think it was coffee and coffee and soda and tea and all, all that. I think hot chocolate. Yeah. Hot chocolate. Yeah. And actually something I just figured out this year before our trip, thank goodness, is that when you buy a resort mug, you can fill that up at other resorts. So if you are doing a resort day and you buy a resort mug or plan on like resort hopping a lot during your trip and you have the resort mug, you can fill it up at other resorts, which is like so worth it to me, especially since that's mainly what we're going to be doing this trip. Yep. I think that's going to be, nice. that's really nice. So anyways, I guess we'll wrap this up. I'm sure it's been going for a while. I think it's at least 15 minutes. But I hope you enjoyed this. It was kind of a one-off video, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about our past trips and like our upcoming trip a little bit yeah. before before we go, which we're really, we're really close. At this point when we're recording this, we are 16 days away. So really exciting stuff. So I have lots more videos coming after this. So um, I've got stroller organization and diaper bag planning and pack with me's and all the things. So if you are interested in any of that, stick around and subscribe with me. And You're bye. probably not going to see me until the trip. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Bye.